Rudolf Ludwig Karl Virchow was a German doctor, anthropologist, pathologist, prehistorian, biologist, writer, editor, and politician. Known for his advancement of public health, he is known as the father of modern pathology because his work helped to discredit humorism, bringing more science to medicine. He is also known as the founder of social medicine and veterinary pathology, and to his colleagues, the Pope of Medicine. Born and lived in Schiefelbein as an only child of a working-class family, he proved to be a brilliant student. Dissuaded by his weak voice, he abandoned his initial interest in theology and turned to medicine. With special military scholarship, he earned his medical degree from Friedrich Wilhelm's Institute under the tutelage of Johannes Peter Müller. He worked at the Charité Hospital under Robert Froreep, whom he eventually succeeded as the prosector. Although he failed to contain the 1847-1848 typhus epidemic in Upper Silesia, his report laid the foundation for public health in Germany, as well as his political and social activities. From it, he coined a well-known aphorism, medicine is a social science, and politics is nothing else but medicine on a large scale. He participated in the Revolution of 1848, which led to his expulsion from Charité the next year. He published a newspaper Die Medicinische Reform during this period to disseminate his social and political ideas. He took the first chair of pathological anatomy at the University of Würzburg in 1849. After five years, Charité invited him back to direct its newly built Institute for Pathology, and simultaneously becoming the first chair of pathological anatomy and physiology at Berlin University. The campus of Charité is now named of Campus Virchow Klinikum. He co-founded the political party Deutsche Fortschrittsparte, by which he was elected to the Prussian House of Representatives, and won a seat in the Reichstag. His opposition to Otto von Bismarck's financial policy resulted in an anecdotal sausage duel between the two. But he ardently supported Bismarck in his anti-Catholic campaigns, the social revolution he himself named as Kulturkampf. A prolific writer, his scientific writings alone crossed 2,000 in number. Among his books, Cellular Pathology published in 1858 is regarded as the root of modern pathology. This work also popularized the third dictum in cell theory, Omnis Cellula e Cellula, although his idea originated in 1855. He founded journals such as Archive für Pathologische Anatomy und Physiology und für Klinische Medizin, and Zeitschrift für Ethnology. The latter is published by German Anthropological Association and the Berlin Society for Anthropology, Ethnology and Prehistory the societies of which he also founded. Virchow was the first to precisely describe and give names of diseases such as leukemia, chordoma, ochronosis, embolism, and thrombosis. He coined scientific terms, chromatin, agenesis, parenchyma, osteoid, amyloid degeneration, and spina bifida. His description of the transmission cycle of a roundworm trichinella spiralis established the importance of meat inspection, which was started in Berlin. He developed the first systematic method of autopsy involving surgery of all body parts and microscopic examination. A number of medical terms are named after him, including Virchow's node, Virchow Robin spaces, Virchow's Eckel syndrome, and Virchow's triad. He was the first to use hair analysis in criminal investigation, and recognized its limitations. His laborious analyses of the hair, skin, and eye color of schoolchildren made him criticize the Aryan race concept as a myth. He was an ardent anti-evolutionist. He referred to Charles Darwin as ignoramus, and his own student Ernst Haeckel, the leading advocate of Darwinism in Germany, as a fool. He discredited the original specimen of Neanderthal as nothing but that of a deformed human, and not an ancestral species. He was an agnostic. In 1861, he was elected a foreign member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. In 1892, he was awarded the Copley Medal of the British Royal Society. 
He was elected to the Prussian Academy of Sciences in 1873, and entitled an ennoblement von Virchow, but which he declined. Life and scientific career. Virchow was born in Schieval by in eastern Pomerania, Prussia. He was the only child of Karl Christian Siegfried Virchow and Johanna Maria Ania Qt Hess. His father was a farmer and the city treasurer. Academically brilliant, he always topped in his classes and was fluent in German, Latin, Greek, Hebrew, English, Arabic, French, Italian, and Dutch. He studied theology and gymnasium in Koslinka in 1835, from where he graduated in 1839 upon a thesis titled A Life Full of Work and Toil is Not a Burden but a Benediction. However, he chose to take up medicine mainly because he considered his voice too weak for preaching. In 1839, he received a military fellowship for studying medicine at Friedrich Wilhelm's Institute in Berlin. He was most influenced by Johannes Peter Müller. He defended his thesis titled De Ruma Presertum Cornea for medical degree on 21 October 1843, with Müller as his doctoral advisor. Immediately on graduation, he became subordinate physician to Müller. But shortly after, he joined the Charité Hospital in Berlin for internship. In 1844, he was appointed as medical assistant to the prosector Robert Froreep, from whom he learned microscopy for his interest in pathology. Froreep was also the editor of an abstract journal that specialized in foreign work, allowing Virchow to be exposed to the more forward-looking scientific ideas of France and England. Virchow published his first scientific paper in 1845 in which he wrote the earliest known pathological descriptions of leukemia. He qualified the medical licensure examination in 1846 and immediately succeeded Froreep as hospital prosector at the Charité. In 1847, he was appointed to his first academic position with the rank of private doesn't. Because his writings were not receiving favorable attention by German editors. With colleague Benno Reinhardt, he founded Archiv für Pathologische Anatomie und Physiologie und für Klinische Medizin in 1847. He edited alone from Reinhardt's death in 1852 until his own. This journal began publishing high level contributions based on the criterion that no papers would be published which contained outdated and tested dogmatic or speculative ideas. Unlike his German peers, Virchow used to have great faith that clinical observation, animal experimentation and pathological anatomy, particularly at the microscopic level, were the basic principles of investigation in medical sciences. He went further and stated the cell was the basic unit of the body that had to be studied to understand disease. Although the term cell had been coined in the 1665 by an English scientist Robert Hooke, the building blocks of life were still considered to be the 21 tissues of Bichat, a concept described by the French physician Marie Bichat. The Prussian government never deployed Virchow to study the typhus epidemic in Upper Silesia in during 1847-1848. It was from this medical campaign that he developed his ideas on social medicine and politics after seeing the victims and the poverty. Even though he was not particularly successful in combating the epidemic, his 190-paged report on the typhus epidemic in Upper Silesia in 1848 became a turning point in politics and public health in Germany. He returned to Berlin on 10 March 1848, and only eight days later, a revolution broke out against the government in which he played an active part. To fight political injustice he helped finding Die Medizinische Reform, a weekly newspaper for promoting social medicine, in July of that year. The newspaper ran under the banners, Medicine is a Social Science, and The Physician is the Natural Attorney of the Poor. Political pressures forced him to terminate the publication in June 1849 and became expelled from his official position. In November, he was given academic appointment and left Berlin for University of Würzburg to hold Germany's first chair of pathological anatomy. 
During his six-year period there, he concentrated on his scientific work, including detailed studies on venous thrombosis and cellular theory. His first major work there was a six-volume Handbuch der Spezial and Pathology and Therapy published in 1854. In 1856, he returned to Berlin to become the newly created Chair for Pathological Anatomy and Physiology at the Friedrich Wilhelms University, as well as Director of the newly built Institute for Pathology on the premises of the Charité. He held the latter post for the next 20 years.